Well, good morning. We are in God's presence. So with God's grace, we set forth God's praise. We listen for God's word. And we seek those things that create life and create salvation, not just on our behalf, uh, but on behalf of our neighbor, about behalf of anyone, as God touches us all in a very special way. And you have been touched in a very special way through the gifts and talents of your birth and of the grace of God and the salvation of Jesus Christ. And with that, I say amen. We, got, uh, we don't have any announcements, uh, no administrative board meeting, uh, but VBS is next week, July 23rd and 20, through the 27th, and we still need some items. And uh, so I will pass it, start it on this side, take a look at it, and pass it on down until it gets all the way up to Margaret here. And uh, then I will collect it. But I don't have any announcements. Does anybody else have any announcements they'd like to make? Yeah, please. That'd, yeah, that'd be good. So our third Okay, there you go. There you go. Anyone else? Well, today, we're going to be in Ephesians. The board's going to read it in a little bit. And it's about God giving gifts to us. And the reality that in those gifts, as Christ has passed them on through the Holy Spirit, we are to pass them on. But we live in a diverse world, don't we? Some people scare us. Some people we just don't know. Sometimes we close the doors. I had a, I had a, I had a friend, I, I belong to the Iowa UM Clergy uh, Facebook page. And one of her small churches um, was having some new families come in. Well, the older people of the congregation, and this is a struggling church, they only got 20 15 to 20 in attendance. At their ad board meeting, decided they want to put new doors on the front of the church. New doors so they could lock them during worship. How do we lock doors? Who do we keep out? Who do we... It's that question I asked earlier. Who do we not want to see sit beside us in worship? It happens. It happens in so many either ways that I just, just explained to you or little subtle ways. We don't look at them people. We don't shake their hands. We... Ignore them, hoping they go away. It happens. This is a diverse world. There's all sorts of people out there. But they're all God's children. And you're God's children too. So let's begin our conversation with God by standing and joining in our call to worship. Let us begin. Almighty God, we have been drawn here by your Holy Spirit to celebrate the gift of Jesus Christ. Shape and mold us in Christ that we might be completely like him. Speak to us this day through the unifying work of worship, the blessed rituals of baptism and communion, and the work of your servants, our leaders, Reveal to us the gifts of heaven, truth, love, faith, and service, 
and save us from the false gifts of this world. We come before you hungry for love and affirmation and thirsty for compassion and justice. Amen. Verses 1, 2, and 5 of the Church's One Foundation. And will the children come forward for young people's time? Who's that man with a clarinet in his hand? Whoa. That's the willy man. Well, first of all, for all of those that will be in the Oakland area between July 23rd through the 27th, I want to invite you to Vacation Bible School. Talk to your mom and your dads and, and about uh, coming to our Vacation Bible School. Uh, we're going to go to Babylon, that place out in the middle of nowhere where a lot of things are happening. We're going to have lions. We're going to have put Daniel in the lion's den. We're going to have Meshach, Shadrach, and Embedigo only by name. And uh, so I know that the two actors who are playing the parts of Daniel and, and one, the guy who uh, uh, is of the court of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, they're really fantastic actors. They're going to give you an Academy Award presentation and you're going to say, oh, wow. But we want you to remember the story. So that's important. So talk to your parents. If you can't come because you're on vacation or uh, it's just one of those weeks that it ain't going to work out, well, we'll miss you, but we understand also. So you're here this morning, and that's what's important. Because you're God's children. Do you know you're special? <laughs> you're special, right? You believe that, Maverick? You're special? You know you're special? What's that? Everybody's special, right? So do we treat everybody special? Okay. So, but sometimes it's hard. And so we got to show them how special they are by the way we act. But that's hard too. Ever have a bad day? No, I know you guys don't have bad days. They're nothing but good days. Oh, this one. Thank you. Let me shake your hand. So, but that's why we're here. It's so when you have a bad day, we can lift you up. Remind you that you're special. You're a special person to us. And we enjoy you being here because you are special. Let us pray. Oh, dear Lord, we thank you. You made us, you created us, and you gave us some really special stuff so that we may love you with all our heart, mind, and soul. And above all, do your work. And with that, we say amen. You may go sit down, and I thank you. So let us sing now, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, the tie that brings all those special kids together. And we're kids too. Now, Anna has a uh, video she'd like to show you. It's called... Why people don't come to church. Here's a few reasons why people don't go to church. I can't come to church until I get my life together. Church is how I got my life together. Church is filled with a bunch of hypocrites. And there's always room for one more. All they care about is your money. They care about me, not about my money. Is there some kind of dress code? Yes, the code is wear some clothes. Church 
It just makes me nervous. I was nervous at first, and then I felt right at home. I'm not sure I believe everything that you believe. But you can still belong. Church is for wimpy, girly men. You want to say that again? If you knew me and what I've done, you wouldn't want me. If you knew me and what I've done, you wouldn't be worried. You can come to my church even if you were brought up. Catholic. Baptist. Methodist. Jewish. Mormon. Lutheran. Pentecostal. Presbyterian. Church of Christ. Southern Baptist. A little bit of everything and a whole lot of nothing. See, it's not about a religion. It's about a relationship. So please, come to my church. Where nobody's perfect. Where beginners are welcome. Where socks are optional. But grace is required. Where forgiveness is offered. Where hope is alive. And where it's okay to not be okay. Really. Would you now stand for the reading of the scripture? And take to heart within this reading from God's word for us today. I urge you then I, who am a prisoner because I serve the Lord, live a life that measures up to the standard God set when he called you. Be always humble, gentle, patient. Show your love by being tolerant with one another. Do your best to preserve the unity which the Spirit gives by means of the peace that binds you together. There is one body and one spirit, just as there is one hope to which God has called you. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one God and Father of all people, who is Lord of all, works through all, and is in all. Each one of us has received a special gift in proportion to what Christ has given. As the scripture says, when he went up to the very heights, he took many captives with him. He gave gifts to the people. Now what does he went up mean? It means that first he came down to the lowest depths of the earth. So the one who came down is the same one who went up above and beyond the heavens to fill the whole universe with his presence. It was he who gave gifts to people. He appointed some to be apostles, others to be prophets, others to be evangelists, others to be pastors and teachers. He did this to prepare all people, all God's people, for the work of Christian service in order to build up the body of Christ. And so we shall all come together to that openness in our faith and in our knowledge of the Son of God. We shall become mature people reaching to the very height of Christ's full stature. Then we shall no longer be children carried by the waves and blown about by every shifting wind of the teaching of deceitful people who lead others into error by the tricks they invent. Instead, by speaking the truth in a spirit of love, we must grow up in every way to Christ, who is the head. Under his control, all the different parts of the body fit together, and the whole body is held together by every joint with which it is provided. 
So when each separate part works as it should, the whole body grows and builds itself up through love. May God write upon our hearts and in our living these words for us today. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Well, Paul tries to tell us that church is a place that we come to have conversation with God. If you want to have it on the lake side, you may be askewed in your idea of what God is all about, since that's a highly personal thing. But here, we sit, we stand, we let God embrace us, and we talk to God. That's called prayer. Worship is about prayer. So... I hope you've been praying about the challenges that we are going to be facing. We've talked about it last two or three weeks. What are we going to do next year after the special general conference? It may not happen then, but I'm sure it will be happening by 2020, where the biggest issue that we face as a denomination falls into our lap. What are we going to say? What are we going to do? Are you praying? Are you thinking? Are you talking to God? You may already think you have an answer. God may say something else. Who are you listening to? But that isn't the only issue that we face as a Christian community. The old pastor once told me, not referring to Ward. <laughs> that all you need is a newspaper and you got a sermon. Lots of sermons in our newspapers. So how do we respond? What are we going to do about the things in our Lives uh, affect us. We hear on the news what our nation is doing. We're called to not answer as Republicans, not as Democrats, but as Christians who love Jesus Christ and love our neighbor. I should say God. So like that little church that I talked to you about earlier, they kind of circled the wagons, locked the doors. They want to keep things as they are. They want to be reclusive, inclusive, and the way it is 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 the way it's going to stay. My interpretation, that is not the gospel that we've been taught. Because our Lord says, got to go, got to do, got to love, got to take care of the least of these. Jesus is a verb. We're not... Christianity is done more on our feet than in our pew seat. Now, the biggest reflection I had on this, and there was two communities that I thought about. One was Postville, which when I was in Monona was only 10 miles away, and that's quite a community, but I really didn't have roots in there. So I relied on the city of Pella, which I was just in yesterday morning. Big car show, lots of people in town, and our youngest daughter and granddaughter met us there, and uh, we had a very good time. Now, I lived, grew up just 16 miles away from Pella, and I delivered bread there when I was a bread man to Pella. So I have some knowledge of what Pella's struggles were. They were pretty inclusive, reclusive. 
They took care of their own. In fact, that's where a lot of animosity towards the Dutch in the surrounding communities came from. They took care of their own, but as other farmers struggled, they didn't come and help. They took care of their own. So there became this animosity, this bias, this prejudice that led people to say, if you're Dutch, if you're not Dutch, you're not much. And there's only three people in kinds of people in this world. You're either Dutch or you wish you were Dutch or you're dead. And because of some barns that got burned down, some crops that got destroyed, yeah, they got into a reclusive mood, an inclusive mood even more. In fact, that idea ex- of, I, should, I shouldn't say inclusive, exclusive, exclusive, that exclusivity lasted until the 1980s. It was just a small burg, about 4,000 to 5,000. And they were a community that kept their national heritage from Holland. But the really backbone of that community was their religion. Their religion created their ethos of who they are. They were Calvinists. They weren't Wesleyan. They were Calvinists. And they had a strong work ethic. They made things work. They made things happen. You might have heard of Vermeer. You might have heard of Pella Products. Those are the two main manufacturing centers in Pella, and they employ a lot of people in southeast Iowa. Well, because of of how they saw their religion, they were a blue city, a blue law city up until the 1980s. And then they let Pizza Hut in, and they let McDonald's in. Now, I never heard, I know Pizza Hut did not open on Sundays. McDonald's, I never heard. They had High V and Super Value. Super Value was owned by a local, and so it shut down on Sundays. High V, would you believe, they didn't have business on Sunday. But then they brought Walmart in. Walmart says, if you want us, we're going to be open seven days a week. They encouraged Hy-Vee seven days a week. That ethos, that aura, that strong Christian base was being challenged. I used to, when I was on the bread route, I'd go shopping in Oskaloosa on Sunday afternoon, and I'd see all sorts of people from Pella there. Yeah, some of the motivation may have been economic. But they were losing something. The world was challenging them. I mean, they were so reclusive that when the DOT decided to build a four-lane highway from Des Moines to Burlington, Iowa, they only wanted one entrance ramp to their city. They didn't want a whole lot of people coming through town. Only at tulip time. DOT talked them out of it because the amount of traffic that Vermeer and Pella Rose Screen created plus tulip time. So what happened? Different churches started to come in. More commerce was created by the success of Vermeer and Pella Rose Screen. People from all over the world. I mean, Vermeer set up this huge world pavilion. If you drive by it, you see flags of 120 countries out front. A reclusive community does not extend welcome to the nations of the world. They had to open their doors. Now, the crux of the issue of this story is Will and I while Diana was wandering around in Jarsma Bakery and Veiled Meat Market and some of the old established places that were in in Pella. 
we kind of walk down through the side streets. Pella has created a little Amsterdam. They brought over a huge windmill uh, piece by piece from Belgium. And I noticed that they kept their core values of who they are. But on the east side of town, there is Hy-Vee and Tyson's. On the west side of town is Fairway and Walmart, Culver's and uh, Applebee's and Sports Page, Arby's. And... But they're kept on the side, still in the center of town. This is who we are. This is our statement. They have 28 churches now. If you ever talk to Tim, he goes to the third reformed church. Big, huge, almost mega church size. When uh, we were at Lacey, we used to take the youth group over there at night and for the contemporary worship service, and there'd be 800 to 900 people there. So they've opened up, but they kept their core values in the center of town. This is who we are. Other churches, they even have a Greek Orthodox church now. I was totally shocked and surprised. It's no longer just Dutch Reformed. They've opened their doors, and this town of 5,000, when I grew up, is now a town of over 10,000. It's prospering. It's growing. They finally figured out that you can starve to death being reclusive, or you can grow by being inclusive. So why do we discuss this today? We cannot grow by ignoring what's going on on the outside. The old adage was church is supposed to bring people in. The new adage is we're supposed to go out. The least of these are out there. The people who Jesus calls us, equips us for ministry are out there. Yeah, we do good at taking care of our own. But there's a diverse community out there that speaks a diverse language. And so here in worship, we got to resemble who we want to be. So when we go out there, we are who we profess to be in here. So who are you? What kind of gifts and talents has God given you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? What can you do? Can you teach? Can you go to a food center? Well, I shouldn't say food shelter and help meals. Can we as a community reach out to a special group of people in our community? Where can we go? What can we do? Where's your gifts and talents showing you to be as a disciple of Jesus Christ? I'm a proponent of diversity. I can only speak English. A little parlez-vous français. No hablo espanol. And that's about the extent of my linguistic talents. But I got other talents. But the biggest talent that we have of all is love. This congregation is filled with it. So how can we use our gifts for the least of these? And with that I say amen. Let us sing the hymn, One Bread, One Body. Amen. Just a postscript talking about gifts. The Grand Avenue Temple was going to uh, close down. I checked my watch. I got time for this. Um, it was going to close down. And it was a big, huge building in the center of Kansas City. 
And so as we went through the process of going through all the books and that so that all the memorials got taken care of, the monies got taken care of, they would have a potluck. Now, they couldn't keep the air conditioning going in that big, huge building, so they opened up the doors and the smell of food wandered out into the street. Some homeless people smelled it. They came in and said, can we eat? Now the Grand Avenue Temple has over 3,000, uh, serves over 3,000 meals a month, only on Saturday and Sunday. They're still alive. And of course, I like the story of the uh, Seeds of Faith in Leicester, Iowa. They were about ready to kick the bucket as the church goes. But their gifts was hammer and nails. And so they started going out and helping their neighbor, especially the elderly, and fixing up homes. And instead of only thinking of Leicester as their community, they said their community extends 30 miles out. And they started fixing up all sorts of people's homes. And one day they fixed a house that sat beside it another denomination's church. They got a call the next day. What are you guys doing? Doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now the seed, um, Seeds of Faith United Methodist Church, instead of less than 20, now has about 180 average attendance on Sunday morning. Hammer and nails, cooking, all your gifts are appreciated by the Lord of Jesus Christ when you give them in love. And so, do we have any joys and concerns this morning? Yes, Sue. Hang on, here comes Trevor. Uh, if you'll remember a few years ago, I asked you all to pray for a cousin of mine who had been diagnosed with colon cancer, and he died a year ago in March. Uh, unfortunately, uh, his next older brother, who is 47, is now in the hospital and has been for more than two weeks. Uh, they have discovered that he has a brain tumor. Um, it is near the brain stem, so it is inoperable. Uh, he has trouble speaking because a couple of the nerves that are being compressed go to his voice box and he can no longer swallow because it's affected that too. Uh, in the last week, he has been in surgery four times. The first time was to do a brain biopsy. The second time was to do, um, to put in a port for chemo and to put in a feeding tube because they won't let him uh, eat anymore because they're afraid it will aspirate into his lungs. And also at that time they went in to kind of relieve the pressure on his voice box and it did improve how he speaks. Uh, they've been doing all these tests because cancer doesn't originate in the brain so they knew it was somewhere else. And they did find it, uh, they did, um, they did remove uh, one of his testicles, they found it there, and then that was the third surgery, and the fourth surgery was when they found out that he was in the 1% that ended up having internal bleeding after that surgery. Uh, so we're not quite sure where this journey is going to take us. Uh, their father died 10 years ago of cancer, so it's, it's very rough on um, the whole family. There originally were four brothers and a sister, uh, so I really feel for all of them. I hugged one of my older cousins yes, or on Monday when I was there, and I said, have you scanned your whole entire body? Just because none of them have had cancer come in the same place. Okay, thank you. Uh, his so. name is Troy. Troy? Okay, anyone else? 
Misha. I might ask for prayers for a Joe and Sadie Cope and their baby. Um, he, I know he was born early, and there's a few problems, and they have been in the hospital for like ten or ten or more days. So um, Joe and Sadie, and I think their baby's name is Everett, and also for Don Putnam, and I think that's all. Um, just keep the family of my cousin, Junior Rao, who passed away this in the last few days. Um, keep his family in your prayers. He was my age, and his funeral will be Tuesday in Oskaloosa. I ask for prayers for my niece, this little baby. Uh, she was supposed to be born in August. The last of August was born this week at two pounds and eight ounces. So far, mother and baby are doing okay, but we, she's got a long ways to go. Okay, thank you, Karen. I don't need the microphone. I just want to say, Christian, congratulations. Christian, baseball team is one year away from the state tournament. He plays a very different role in that. Good luck. Amen. Anyone else? I'd like to ask our congregation to keep Franz Cardell in your prayers. He's at Risen Sun, and they don't think he will get to come out. He's not doing very well. Anyone else? Well, let us gather in heart, mind, and prayer. Thank you for making us special, Lord. You've given us all gifts and talents. You've treated us special. You wish to talk to us, walk with us, be with us in a special way. And may we learn what it is you call us to do. What we are to do as a community of faith. Some of us know what we're to do as your disciples. But you don't call us individually, you call us together. There's always that idea that the people inside this congregation are here because God has placed us here. Sometimes it's about matching up our talents. But it all starts with prayer. So Lord, I pray that these people these special people that you've created. Listen, contemplate, not meditate, but contemplate what it is you're telling us to do. And then, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may do it. So now I turn over to you the prayers of these people that they speak to you in their own special language. And Lord, I pray they take a lifetime to hear your answer. Lord, hear our prayers. Now to let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, with the ushers, uh, bring the place forward so that we may return to God what God has blessed us with throughout this week. Let us pray. From on high, O Lord, you give us the wonderful gifts of family, faith, reason, the spirit, and all of creation. In gratitude and thanks, we return to you a portion of the treasure trove you have given us. Bless these gifts that they may accomplish your work to heal, comfort, rescue, and restore. Amen. You're done. <laughs> Our benediction is, God desires that you have faith in the one sent into the world to bless us. Go forth into the world as a gift from God to bless the world around you with faith, peace, unity, and love. And with that, we all say, Amen. Let us close with Forward Through the Ages. Mm -hmm.